Package context and concurrency in Golang can be, from time to time, a very confusing uh, mat material. And um, there are a lot of tutorials already on the, on the internet. I have some tutorials about package context and concurrency, but uh, I wanna show you a real life, a real world example of uh, some advanced concurrency, well advanced, some uh, common concurrency pattern and uh, the usage of package context in uh, my, new side, my new side hustle, which is basically Cert Pulse, uh, which will track uh, and monitor all your SSL uh, certificates across different providers, endpoints, and all that stuff. Um, so basically, uh, before we start, guys, if you like the videos I'm providing to you, consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments, and um, jump into my Discord community, right? Uh, for the people that really uh, want to see how I built this thing uh, from the ground up, you can go to my Patreon page, um, join my private community, and there I all um, provide all these videos, Stripe integration and all that stuff. So basically the whole shebang, how I built this up from a zero blank page to uh, what it's eventually going to be. Uh, yes, so basically, um, let's start with a simple thing. Uh, why are we using concurrency here? So let's go to our uh, domains here, right? And um, which basically is a dashboard of, of all our domains. Let me basically zoom in also a little bit. <coughs> uh, for the blind homies here, something like this maybe. Yes, so yeah, yeah, fine. So uh, we have the possibility to add domains, right? So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm quickly gonna fetch, uh, chat GPT has given me 100 domains here. I'm gonna paste them in here, right? So you can see there is a list, a text area, and uh, people can basically paste one or multiple domains uh, into that thing. So if we're gonna um, press a track button, you can see it's, it's basically thinking, it's doing stuff behind the scenes. Of course, I'm going to use HTMX to uh, do a loading state and everything later on, but for now, this is fine. So, boom, now we are back at our uh, dashboard. So we have 100 domains that are basically getting pulled concurrently, concur concurrently, uh, it's still early, so I'm sorry, uh, concurrently, and uh, what we do is we check the certificate and we do some operations with it. We uh, do some data massaging, save it into our database and call it a day, right? Um, also behind the scenes, basically, let me uh, show you that. Uh, so let's make a new thingy here. Uh, I have a pulser, if I do make pulser, it's basically a um, background service that I made in Golang that will uh, continuously pull all the certificates and uh, notifies the status if uh, something is offline or the certificate is invalid or basically, um, yeah, it's expired, right? Um, that's basically what's, what, what this thing is doing. So, um, yeah, cool. Let's show some code, right? Uh, I'm gonna open up the SSL thing, right? So this is my SSL package, uh, and we have this beautiful function here, and that function is uh, poll domain, right? And we give this poll domain a context and a string, which is going to be the domain string, right? And it's gonna return us a, do a data domain tracking info and an error, right? So let's first inspect data domain tracking info real quick, uh, domain tracking, yeah, so you can see we have the issuer, the signature algo, public key algo, uh, the encoded PAM, public key, all that stuff is basically um, being stored in the database and it's getting pulled every X amount of time and getting updated with new values if that's the case, right? So how is this gonna work basically is that we um, this we have two, two, two important parts. We have the poll domain and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna pull multiple domains, right? We need to start with the beginning. So it's actually very simple. Uh, we make a start basically for uh, checking latency and all that stuff and also for logging so we can actually see how long it took. Uh, we're gonna make a result channel, which is gonna be a channel of data domain tracking info, right? Um, you could say you could buffer that, you could not buffer that, it doesn't actually really matter. Uh, then we're gonna have a, con uh, a config, which is a TLS config, which we're gonna update. And then we start basically our uh, go routine, right? So we're gonna schedule this uh, TLS dial into another go routine, right? Um, so basically what we do is actually, this, this detail implementation doesn't really matter. We're gonna check some stuff. Uh, if it's an error, we're gonna check what error it is. Maybe it's an, an invalid certificate or something. So uh, we're gonna pipe that to our results 
uh, if the connection is refused to gonna say status that uh, data status offline write that to a result channel of course closing our connection uh, and all that stuff so we're gonna do a, a lot of then here basically is if we have a connection we're gonna set our uh, domain tracking info and write it to our results right but the most interesting part here is this selecting right so you know that we have this context here right and uh, what I'm doing and you're gonna see that in the later on is what we do is we pass in a context with timeout it's very important because if we're gonna start pulling these domains we want to have a deterministic time that it's going to take to pull a domain, right? Sometimes domains will respond directly. Some domains will respond in a very slow time. We don't want that. We want to have a deterministic system. So we're going to say, I give you five seconds to pull. And if that's not between, if that's not within these five seconds, we're going to cancel our context. That's why we basically schedule this in, another, in, an, uh, in a go routine. So then we can directly select and wait for things that are gonna happen. So two things can happen, right? Or it's going to return as a response, right? This result, result here, and result here, right? That's basically here. Case, we have a result, we're gonna return the result, but case or context is done, which basically means that the context is canceled. That means that this function took more than five seconds to complete, then we're basically going to return also a result, but we're gonna say that uh, it's gonna be a status unresponsive. Which basically means, uh, it's I know it's a weird, uh, some kind of a scuffed word, but um, if you cannot, re if does, the endpoint did not respond within five seconds, it's an unresponsive endpoint. It's not offline. It's also not actually online yet. Uh, well, it's maybe online, but it's just unresponsive, right? If you cannot respond in five seconds, something is wrong. Uh, so that's basically what we do here. So. Uh, it doesn't matter how many of these uh, poll domains we're gonna we gonna we gonna call we gonna uh, uh, how many functions we gonna call on this. We know that each of these poll domain calls is gonna take five seconds and not longer, a maximum of of five seconds. It's very important in your systems if you want to make uh, robust deterministic systems. You need to use package context, right? You need to give it a timeout or a deadline. So that's that. So basically, that's one domain, right? It's very simple. Uh, so let's go to the monitor. Actually, I call it Pulsar. <coughs> so the Pulsar here, what the Pulsar is doing, right? Um, actually, very simple. Let me show you. So we have a type monitor, uh, which actually should be Pulsar, but it's fine. We're going to create a new monitor uh, with an interval and all that stuff, a quit channel to quit it. And then we got have a function poll, right? And um, how this poll is getting called, let me show you. Here, right? We have this monitor start. So what's going to happen is we're going to create a new ticket. And first of all, uh, I'm going to, each time we start, I'm going to basically already pull, right? I'm going to just do a, a quick pull. And if it's not working, I'm going to do a lock fatal out. So I instantly know that something is wrong, right? Uh, but then we have this for loop here. And what's going to happen is um, we're going to for select loop, right? And there are two basically cases, or we have our ticker that's ticking, right? every two seconds, every five seconds, every whatever, doesn't really matter. Or we have our quit channel that's basically triggered, right? That's closed or, or, or we write uh, an empty struct to it to quit this monitor and close, shut them down. So each time we're gonna receive a channel from the ticket, which is a time, uh, it's gonna return you a time dot time. We're gonna say start now, we're gonna pull, and then we're gonna log uh, basically uh, pull complete took so many seconds, right? Default stuff, no big of a deal. It's this poll function that's basically the interesting thing, right? So key parts to take away, start, we select, and we wait, uh, we wait for the channel, uh, the time ticker channel, each time it ticks, we're gonna do a poll. Boom, poll here. So the first thing I'm doing, uh, and this can be optimized later on, I completely agree, is we're gonna get all the trackings with their associated account, right? Um, why do we need the associated account? It's very important because we need to know uh, what email address we need to notify, uh, how many days up front we need to notify, and all, uh, do they have a Slack connection? Do they have a team connection? Uh, how many email addresses do they have and all that stuff? Uh, so we need to know that so we can actually notify them based on what they configured, right? So we're gonna fetch all these uh, trackings with account. Then 
very interesting is here, we're gonna have some workers, right? So let's say we're gonna have, for example, 10,000 domains. Uh, we don't wanna spin up 10,000 go routines. It's gonna work for 50, it's gonna work for 100, maybe it's gonna work for 1,000, but I mean, uh, you could basically uh, get your resource limit very fast. If you're basically gonna uh, schedule one uh, 10,000 go routines, that's not a good idea, right? So what we do is we have some workers, which is 15 in this case, could be 20, could be 50, could be five, it doesn't really matter, you need to play around with that. Um, we're also gonna make a sync weight group because we're gonna schedule uh, a lot of stuff in GoRoutines and we basically wanna wait until everybody is complete. That's why we use a sync weight group to sync that stuff. Um, then we're gonna have some results, which is basically um, just a channel of data domain tracking. And that's going to be the updated domain trackings, right? So we have one domain tracking from the database. We're gonna pull the endpoint, and then we're gonna update that tracking with the new values, right? Maybe a certificate has changed, maybe it's offline, maybe it's expired, who knows what's going on, right? Uh, you don't know, and that's why I'm making this tool, so you know, right? Send me an email, come to my Discord, uh, so we can discuss business, right? Uh, so basically, uh, what we do is very simple, we're gonna loop over all these trackings, we're gonna increment our weight group, and then we're gonna start uh, making a go routine here, and what we do is basically we make a um, context with timeout, and we're gonna say five seconds here, uh, with this, uh, it will return as a context and a cancel thingy. We're gonna block for the workers, right? So we basically uh, make sure that we don't exceed our worker limit. Um, and each time the this function completes, it could be an uh, have a defer function, so it could be a function that is completed, it could be an error that is being returned. We're gonna always defer this function here. We're gonna basically write uh, our worker channel, which basically gonna free up that um, that that workers right. So there is uh, people that are blocking on this channel will have uh, the ability to do again some more work because this one is basically done. Uh, we're also gonna say that the wait group is done, right? Otherwise, we're gonna keep waiting. And then we're gonna also uh, defer the cancel here, uh, which is very important, so we don't leak these things, right? So uh, that's that. Then we're gonna here do our poll domain, which is the function I showed you in the beginning. We're gonna pause in this context, so it's basically uh, going to uh, cancel it after five seconds. We're gonna have an error, and of course this info thingy, we're gonna set uh, here, you can see we're gonna basically get this info, we're gonna swap that out with the one we have, then we're gonna do and maybe notify, right? It's basically some notify interfaces, email, Slack, and all that stuff. It's gonna check if it needs to notify, when it, what it needs to notify, to who it needs to notify, and all that stuff. And then we're basically going to write this domain tracking into the results, right? Uh, my previous implementation was with a slice, but that's not concurrent safe, so we use a channel, and we can basically coordinate all the results into that, right? Cool. Here, very simple, we're gonna wait uh, until everybody's done, we're gonna close our results and then we're gonna process the results in the process results function uh, because we're gonna have a chain of domain trackings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make uh, just a normal slice of domain trackings based on the length of that channel. We're gonna loop through that channel. Uh, so we're gonna make a nice slice here of these trackings and then we basically are going to call data update all these trackings in the database at once. So we um, have one query call, which is already discussionable because uh, one query is of course better and more performant than multiple queries, but that's until some extent because um, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna update, I don't know, maybe 10,000 records in once, not quite sure if that's a good idea. So, uh, but hey, first make it work optimize it later on. Otherwise, uh, there's gonna be a rabbit hole. Uh, that's maybe a tip I can give you. You can keep optimizing, uh, which is basically pre-optimizing uh, pre your stuff for things that are not needed. And it's gonna be a, a, a rabbit hole um, that's gonna waste you a lot of time. It's gonna drain energy. It's gonna kill your dopamine levels and it's probably gonna kill your uh, project also <coughs> because you're gonna lose interest, right? Cool, so uh, update all trackings and that's it. Right, that's it. So you can see, basically here, the puller is still busy, right? He's, uh, um, you can see PepsiCo and HSBC are basically unresponsive. That basically means that they are not uh, re uh, responding within these five seconds, and that could be at several reasons, but hey, it is what it is. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. So you could see, for example, the sanded thing. Let's show this. 
Uh, couple cool stuff, we can send test notifications, we can stop tracking here. Um, you can see it's a digital signature, let's encrypt. Extended usage, server out, client out, uh, the latency, you can actually view raw with the certificate and all that stuff, uh, public key and all that, and, and all that good, good shit to debug your, um, your things, right? Uh, and you can see that basically updating, right? So each time we refresh, uh, refresh you can see the latency here and how many, and uh, how long it's been, um, how long, it, uh, damn, what what was the last time we checked? It's very early in the morning and I'm pretty hyped today, not gonna lie, and um, that's why I'm basically uh, scripting my words, but it's no, no, which is no new news. So that's basically it, guys. Uh, so you can see a real case, a real case usage of um, package context and um, concurrency, right? Uh, maybe it's a little, hey, if, if, if this is too fast for you, no problem, you can slow the video down to uh, to check how, how how it works, right? And if you really want to know that in depth, uh, check uh, my Patreon page, right? I hope this video uh, gives you a little bit more motivation, a little bit more uh, insight on how you can use these things. If you spot a bug, please let me know so I can fix it because nobody's perfect, right? Uh, but it's working fine. Uh, so that's good. So maybe some optimizations I can do is here with these accounts, right? Um, because right now I have multiple tiers in my application, the free tier, the starter tier, the business tier, the enterprise tier, uh, and I wanna have a faster poll rate for uh, the enterprise accounts uh, in, co in comparison to the uh, free tiers, right? Um, so what I can do is basically make multiple monitors with m uh, different intervals based on accounts. So instead of get trackings with account, get all the trackings, we're basically going to, um, uh, get all the free accounts and pull these ones in, in interval X, get all the enterprise accounts and pull these one much faster, right? Something like that. All right, cool. Uh, like I said, check uh, my Patreon page, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, jump into my Discord community. And actually for the people, uh, I have a 50% summer sale discount, discount on the full-time GoDev if you're willing to become a Golang engineer. All links in the description. Have a nice weekend. See you in the next live video or uh, stream. Bye-bye.